Hey guys, in this video we're going to show you installing the main gear leg on our Bear Hawk, the tires and the wheels, the brake calipers, and then in detail installing the rest of the brake system. All right, so we started by assembling the shock struts. Bearhawk builder Ken Fram has a YouTube video that details this process specifically. He does a better job showing that process than I could, so I'll just link that video rather than trying to replicate it. Next, we installed the main gear legs. Then, the shock struts attached to the belly of the fuselage and to the main gear legs with large rod end bearings. These rod end bearings are threaded and allow for adjusting the spread of the main gear down the road. We chose to go with the Grove wheel and brake assembly offered with the Bearhawk kit. With the main gear in place, I installed the torque plate for the brake calipers. To attach the torque plate, I clamped it in place and used a 3 8 spacer to perfectly center a quarter inch drill bit in the hole. These are cheap from a big box store, so I used a new one for each hole. The instructions said only three or four of the holes needed drilled out, so I used four. Once the holes were drilled, I used a reamer to make them final size. Next, I used a Dremel to remove a small amount of weld directly below the washers to allow them to lay flat. After a little touch-up paint and primer had dried, I installed the torque plates. Then I installed tires on the wheels. The wheels have two halves with a rotor on one side and it's all held together with three bolts. After disassembling the wheels, I prepared the tubes and tires by dusting them with talc powder. Then I put the tube in the tire and put just enough air in the tube that it would fill the tire. Afterwards, the tire can be slid over the outside half of the wheel while feeding the valve stem through the valve stem hole. Once I had double checked everything was lined up and wouldn't pinch the tube, I put the inside half of the wheel in place, followed by the brake rotor, and then finished up with the bolts and topped it off with air. I haven't decided for sure what size of tires we're going to use, so for now we've put on a set of runout tires so that we can kick that ball down the road further. Before installing the wheel on the axle, I cleaned it up with some fine grit sandpaper. Then I slid the wheel on and tightened down the axle nut appropriately and marked where to drill the cotter key. My hand drilling isn't great, so I made a little jig to help me drill through the axle true to my intended line. Next, I put the brake calipers on. The inside piece slides into place, and the outside piece is then slipped into position and held into place with bolts that go through the inside piece. With the gear and wheels in place, it was time to start routing the brake lines. First, I drilled holes for Adele clamps to secure the lines and drilled a hole in the center of the gear and installed a bulkhead fitting. Then I installed the NPT to AN fittings in the brake cylinders, as well as the brake calipers. All NPT threads received Loctite 565 thread sealant. 
Next, I made a little bracket out of 032 aluminum to mount the parking brake valve. I used this bracket to mount the parking brake valve on the former under the pilot's feet. With all the fixed locations finished, I started bending the hard brake lines. The line in the gear legs, I had exit out the bottom on the inside and loop around the back of the gear leg to attach the calipers. I'm told I need some sort of loop or S-bend to absorb a little bit of movement at the calipers. This large loop is probably overkill, but I see it's how Colin did it on the Model 5 prototype, so I tried to copy it. Then I marked and made the appropriate bends to meet the bulkhead fitting at the top of the gear leg. Once it was cut to length, I flared the end. The second one I made, I even remembered to slide the nut and sleeve on first. With the top finished, I secured the line in place with two Adele clamps on the mounting tabs and then marked and finished the bottom end. The other place I used hard lines was from the parking brake valve to near the gear attachment points. I bent and routed these lines through the former, sized them, flared the ends, and secured them with Adele clamps. To accommodate the movement of the landing gear, flexible lines are needed at the pivot point. So I attached the rigid lines in the gear legs to the rigid lines coming from the parking brake valve with short flexible lines. Flexible lines are also needed at the brake cylinders since they move with the rudder pedals. I used some rope to estimate how long the flex lines would need to be to allow the rudder pedals to move freely. Then I ordered pre-made Aeroquip braided stainless steel flex lines that were pressure tested to 4,000 PSI. I initially planned to use one brake fluid reservoir and mount it on the firewall. I played around with several different lengths of flex lines and locations but wasn't overly happy with my setup. I was also a little bit nervous about mounting the brake fluid reservoir on the firewall somewhere that I wish I hadn't have when we start working on the firewall forward. So I decided to go with the individual reservoirs that mount straight to the cylinders. That's all we've got to show you for this one, so we'll see you guys in the next one.